Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Ask the Expert Show, hosted by my co-host, Teresa Reem, and myself, Patty Farmer. We're looking forward to sharing today's expert with you, and we encourage you to connect with her after the show and to take action in your business on the expertise she's going to share. So Teresa is going to introduce our guest. Yes, today I'm excited to introduce Jennifer Eurizio, and we're going to be talking about your soul language today. So let me tell you a little bit about Jennifer. Um, she is the founder of Soul Language, a, par a paradigm that puts tangibility to soul, uh, tangibility to soul, so a conscious connection can be established to enable crystal clear decisions of success. That's true. Jennifer is also a master intuitive and the author of two best-selling books. Currently, she has trained over 30 practitioners worldwide in soul language. At this time, there are over 5,000 individuals, you can have me for that list, all over the world connecting to their soul languages. Jennifer, I'm so happy to have you join us. I'm so honored. Thank you so much. I love it. I love it. I'm happy to say I'm one of that number two. Um, Jennifer did my soul languages and it has been a game changer, dare I say life changer in my business. So I'm so excited to have you here, Jennifer. So let's just jump right in with our questions. So here's the thing we want to know. So what's the number one thing, Jennifer, that differentiates you from everyone else in your industry and that you're the most passionate about in your business? I think that, you know, with a lot of transformational tools, they give you information that you know, right? And then, and then you need, need someone to help you walk through those transformational tools. Like Enneagram is great and Harsk and astrology is great. And and human design is amazing, but I get look at my human design chart and I go, what does this all mean, right? How do I utilize it to build consciousness? With soul language, you're given the language is our jump start, and you're giving a process to connect really deep to who you are and move from struggle to consciousness. So I think that's totally unique. And soul language is the only paradigm that actually puts words to the core essential energies of your soul. And I think I'm passionate because I just want people to connect. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to struggle. And like you guys, my struggle and my suffering is so subtle, not when I'm experiencing it, but the actual shift of it is, right? I'm not moving boulders anymore. I'm moving these little tiny grains of sand from one side of the beach to the other. And that takes deeper tools, that takes more powerful tools. And it takes a way to like, listen to that part of me that knows I'm wholly complete and go, oh, Jen, your humanness is out of control. Let's really remember your whole and complete and let's work with the alignment of, of humanness and soul. So your humanness goes, oh wait, no, I'm great. I rock, I've got my t-shirt on. How do I wanna express myself from a place of wholeness and completeness versus feeling separate? or feeling not enough. That makes a lot of sense. And one of the things that you do that I really love is that when you did my soul language, that your personal and your business were not the same. I mean, maybe they are for some people, they weren't mine, right? So I think that was really, really great to know what that soul language is in both, because right, your business and your life both are equally as important. So I thought that was really kind of amazing that we could tap into both of them. So I really, really love that. So, so um, Jennifer, yes, I'd like to add something too. The okay. soul language really, um, what I did for me was help me know that there were parts of me that were very wise in certain areas and that I didn't have to second guess myself on things. Yeah. No, actually, yeah. that's you know, a good I point. Think it's a very good point. And I think so often people go, I want to trust myself more. I want to trust myself more. And, and I, I thought I was trusting myself and then this happened and, and I'll go, hmm, were there little signs, right? Like, were you really like operating from a place of connection or were you thinking it through? 
And then I have to remind people that, oh, wait, there's free will involved and you're not on a channel by yourself. Others are contributing to the experience. Um, and so it allows you to create this new relationship with listening and taking action and asking those questions. And one of the, the favorite questions I love to tell clients are, are you taking action from pain and programming? Or are you taking action from consciousness and wholeness and completeness? And again, it's very subtle, very sneaky. So by tuning in, you're having this deeper level of trust. And Patty, people do have languages in common with their personal soul and their business soul. And when that happens, I always cringe a little for them because that's a lot of energy to keep conscious, right? We call in a business to do something bigger first for ourselves. I'm gonna say that again, because most people don't get that. First for ourselves and then for others. And you're both masters of service. So you're always wanting to be of service to others, but you've created a business here as this bus pass of you sharing your guests, receiving what you want and expressing your essential nature. And sometimes that takes energy that's different than your personal soul, right? That we're not always gravitating to people that are exactly like us, right? That would make life pretty boring. Mm -hmm. But when you have a language, a business language that's different than your personal, that allows you like a deeper, it gives you a stronger coat sometimes of putting something new on so you can energetically get where you want to go and experience all of the goodness in this world. I don't think a lot of us declare our goodness as much as we could. That makes a lot of sense. I know for me, one of the biggest things that I got out of working with you is the ability or the freedom to give myself grace when I needed to. I, I think that's yeah. so important sometimes to just give ourselves grace. And I just find that I don't get stuck in the mucky muck as much. I just give myself grace and say, Patty, give yourself grace and move on. And I love that. Like that has been just such a great thing about working with you and really getting that. And it's so much easier to do right now because you don't get stuck, right? You can just say, oh, give yourself grace, Patty, move on. <laughs> and it's just so much easier. And I love that. So thank you so much for that. But it kind of leads yeah. into a question I really want to know, what is the best compliment you've ever received from a client? Um, that I was liquid nitrogen. Ooh. You know, someone was like, <laughs> right. Someone was like, listen, I've been going to therapy for 15 years. We worked together in 15 minutes and resolved the conflict. So like I was liquid nitrogen and that I was like the Barbara Walters of intuitives um, because people cry around me and they feel safe to cry around me. Um, uh, people who don't like to cry, strong women, fierce entrepreneurs, powerful people. Um, and I think that's really important. I think everyone needs a place where they can feel safe being vulnerable and really powerful women like the both of you, very strong women, very successful women, are so used to, uh, I'll just put on my, good, which I don't like this phrase, by the way, I'm going to put on my big girl pants and do it. You guys never take off the big girl pants, right? I never take the big girl pants off. So when you have a place where you can go, I don't know if I can do this, or I'm really sad, or this experience is actually preventing me from receiving more. There's such grace and power in that. And that allows you to break that spiritual glass ceiling. I mean, I broke my ankle almost two weeks ago. And the amount of times that I've had to ask, ask for help is astounding. And there was one part, everyone, that I was outside at night with the broken ankle, no shoe, because I forgot to put on the shoe, walking the dog. And my landlord's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm walking the dog. And he's like, why didn't you ask for help? And I was like, oh, Marlon, I couldn't get it out. Of, I couldn't physically get it out of my mouth, right? That how has that been impacting my business, right? So now I ask for help. I ask for help all the time and it gets easier. I know, right? It gets easier and it's had another huge impact on my business. So those are places where people need 
to know that they're not alone. And I think so many of us who are very strong, very fierce, very independent, running successful businesses, feel really alone and without support. And so those are some of the compliments that people have said. I love that. Do you find, because I know that I think for me, I fall into this category, but do you find that some of the people who are the most willing to step in and help others, right? Oh, just ask me. I, I would love to do that for you, right? Are the ones that have the hardest time asking for help? Of course, right? Like we're all great givers, right? But if everyone's doing all this giving, who's doing the receiving? It, it needs to be balanced. And that's not about giving with an agenda. And I think masters of service are so afraid to give, you know, with that thinking that they're, oh my God, I don't want to give with like, you know, expecting anything or wanting anything. And yet there's the, all of this space inside of them, especially that little girl, little boy inside of them that goes, when is it my turn? You have to acknowledge that we, you know, the divine universe to be Bob Cupcake are going to send humans to help you. It could send a tree, but that would scare the bejesus out of you, right? And it'd be awkward branches everywhere, right? So they're going to send a human to help you. And I think so many of us stiff arm the universe. This is a perfect example. I'm in the, the post office several years ago and those post office doors are so heavy, right? They're like, you, you got to use two hands. And there's this woman who has a three baby carriage, three babies in a carriage, all the packages on top of the baby carriage. Right. And I'm like, can I help you? And she's like, no, no, I got it. And I'm like, no, in my inside voice, no lady, you don't have it. There's no way you're going to be able to open that door. And I was like, screw this. I'm going to help her. Right. I think so often we do that. And when we accept that it is our divine right to receive as well as give, that allows us to give more because we're not starving ourselves or being uh, not generous with ourselves. I think so many masters of service are so generous with other people and then deny themselves so many things. I actually agree with you. And a coach told me a long time ago, and I have never forgotten, they said, if you are a giver and you love to serve others, that just the reciprocity, people love to serve you. And every time you refuse to ask for help, you're doing them a disservice to allow them to serve you as well, right? And stuff. And so it isn't always about you, <laughs> right? Sometimes it's it really about them. Off. It actually throws you off balance because there's a balance of the giving and the receiving. And when it's just all giving, it tips the scale and really throws you off balance too as a human. Yeah. And that's why also a lot of entrepreneurs that are masters of service go through this up, down, up, down with their business because they're off in that giving and receiving cycle, right? And here's the thing, we're receiving all the time. Most of the time we're receiving not what we truly want to experience. So if you open up to asking, receiving what you want, then you're going to get more goodness versus the you know, misfire of receiving. Oh, I love that. And I love what you said too, Teresa, that part about the balance being off balance. That's a really good visual of really thinking about that. I love the way you worded that too. So that is so important. So important. So Jennifer, who can we introduce you to that would move the needle or be a game changer in your business in the next 30 days? You know, it's not just Teresa and I, it's literally everyone who is going to see this video, right? That we're going to share with our networks. So they're going to hear you too. So let's just manifest that right now, right? Who I can love we it. introduce you to? So I always have this, I've had this knowing for years about working with people who are in the public eye. You know, those people tend to be doing their game, right? But if we align their consciousness more, the people that they touch have an opportunity to be more conscious. And um, I would love to work with more people that are in the public eye, that have huge communities, that are masters of service, that are 
really leading a community to help them find line and break through their spiritual glass ceiling. Uh, I was watching Wonder Woman 1984, which I've been trying to watch it for like since it came out. And last night I was like, woohoo, HBO, you gotta get it. And there's this scene where at the end where the bad guy is standing in the stream of like where it's reaching all of these TV monitors and touching all of these people. And Wonder Woman is, is sitting there going, no, wait, you don't have to suffer. You don't have to uh, give up what you want. You can be loved and supported. I'm paraphrasing Wonder Woman. But, um, and that's how it is when you work with someone who's in the public eye. They have that ability to offer that uh, ability to suffer less to others. So we want to help them be as clear and as operating from wholeness as completeness as they can. And that's very subtle, very sneaky operation. So I would love to work with more of those people. I love that. And I love the way you explained it too, right? I mean, I think that was a great explanation. So that was awesome. So what social media platform are you the most active on? So everybody will know where they should go to connect with you, right? The most active one I'm on is Facebook. Uh, I have a personal page, which is not my name. I have a business page, which is Soul Language. But then I have this group called Spiritual Renegades. Uh, and I love the group because they're really people who are highly intuitive, highly creative, making a difference. Um, and that's where you'll find my little bits of wisdom. I also have a special kind of inner circle on my newsletter list that people receive special kind of the inside the mind of gen stuff and special tools. So those are a couple locations where you can interact with me. Awesome. I like that you gave us so many choices. So that's really great. Everybody can just do it. I actually love your newsletter and there are some really great wisdom in there. So to kind of wrap it up, we want to serve and support you, Jennifer. So do you have any type of new project that you're working on or some type of project or idea or something that we can do to serve and support you? I do this amazing thing called, I write a personal prayer for people. Uh, it's $20, you fill out a form and you get a prayer within 24 hours. I love doing this for individuals because it helps people really focus their manifestation. It helps them declare their goodness. Uh, it's something I love to do. It also is one of the things that brings me so much joy to write a prayer for someone. So that's something I would love to offer people and get the word out uh, about a lot because it's when, when you have something that you can read every day that declares your goodness, that allows you to understand in my verbiage with God, business is good, then it allows you to go further than you could ever think of. And it's such an easy kind of uh, product to offer someone, both for me and for them, and so cost-effective. So that's what it is. It's called Mini uh, Shift and Pray on my website under Power of Prayer. Awesome. That's really exciting. And so our audience there that is tuning in, that's kind of a wrap for us today. And thank you, Jennifer, for being a guest on the show and sharing your zone of genius. And to the audience, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us. And if you enjoyed today's show, and I'm sure that you did, please don't keep us a secret. Share us with your network. And believe me when I say your colleagues and your friends will thank you. But before we go, we have an invitation for you. And Teresa's is going to share that invitation. Thank you, Patty. Jennifer, that was amazing. I just, I could, I could listen to you talk all day. So thank you so much. Um, we would like to invite you to join us on our Facebook group and connect with our wonderful guest, Jennifer, with Patty and myself and the other amazing women as part of the Professional Women's Network of the Monterey Peninsula, known as PWN. And now, and now it also includes members locally, nationally, and also internationally. And we would love to have you join us and share your expertise with our audiences. And you can find us at www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash PWN Monterey. 
Thank you. Awesome. Thank you again, Jennifer. It was so great to have you yeah. here with us. You shared your brilliance so generously as usual. And thank you to my co-host. This was wonderful, Teresa. So thank you so much. And make sure everybody that you tune in, remember it will be Fridays at noon central time where we will be dropping these videos in the group and everywhere else on the web. So thank you so much. Have a phenomenal week, everyone. Bye now. Bye.